Welcome to the Pre-Snap Podcast presented by LineStar, your top five NFL player prop bets for week four in the NFL. Alongside Tyler Riemann, I'm Shannon Somerville. We've got some great picks for you to go along with a great slate of games that we have. Our picks are available Underdog Fantasy, Sleeper, Chalkboard, Parlay Play, and if you don't have those apps, download them. Use the promo code LineStar so you can get a very nice deposit match plus one free month of the LineStar app. The LineStar app is an amazing tool that can help you in the prop betting game with the props AI tool that we're going to be referencing throughout this video. Or if you're a DFS player, great DFS projections plus a lineup optimizer. So check it out at linestarapp.com. Let's get into this slate of games that we've got. Last week on the show, we were just two and three in our picks, but I do want to point out that the our first two picks, they were absolute smash spots. We took the over on Amari Cooper's receiving yards, which was 47 and a half. He finished with 86. And then we also had Dallas Goddard over 39 and a half receiving yards, and he finished with 170. So two absolute smash spots that crushed the over for us. So hopefully we can make it five for five this week. By the way, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel and comment below. It helps us out in the good old YouTube algorithm department, but it also helps you out because if we go five for five, one randomly selected commenter will win a hundred bucks. It's that easy. Got to be in it to win it. So make sure you like subscribe and comment below. And if you have any locks for this week, let us know in the comments. We're all trying to help each other out and beat the books. That is the common goal to win money. So hopefully we can do just that this week. All right, let's get this show kicked off. And we're going to start things off the right way with a Georgia Bulldog on the week of Georgia, Alabama. Love the spot here for George Pickens. Over 51 and a half receiving yards. Line stars projection is 59.5. So some nice edge there. Pickens is averaging 57 receiving yards per game this season and going up against an Indianapolis Colts defense that ranks 26 in pass defense DVOA versus wide receiver ones. Remember that stat just takes into account more of the quality of opponent. Roma Dunze just had 112. DJ Moore also put up 78 just last week. And then Pickens actually had 47 last year versus Indianapolis, but that was with Deontay Johnson when he was still on the team. And Deontay Johnson racked up 62 in that game. And that was also with the combination of Mitch Trubisky and Mason Rudolph at quarterback, Tyler. So I kind of like uh, the chances here for Mr. George Pickens. What do you think? I think George Pickens is in just an amazing spot. The other thing you mentioned that he's 26 and DVOA. He's 27th on our uh or the Colts are 27th on our team defense tool. But then also Justin Fields uh, is in a spot where he's against the 30th ranked Colts team. So mm -hmm. it's a good spot for Justin Fields. It's a good spot for Pickens. He's been over. He's developing some great chemistry with uh, Fields. And remember last year, <laughs> Moore had a giant season with uh, Fields, and mm -hmm. I feel it coming for Pickens. It just might take a little bit of time for, one, the offense to trust Fields a little bit more, but I think they are. And his, his as his, uh, you know, role grows, so will George Pickens, and a big, big breakout is coming, and it could be this week. He's in a great spot. And it's been nice to see Justin Fields just making kind of an evolution, making – you know, when you watch some of his highlights, he's definitely connecting for passes that he never did before. So he's definitely making a lot of improvements in his passing game specifically. So that really bodes well for some of the receivers, especially like George Pickens, who's basically an acrobat. Like he could be in Cirque du Soleil with some of those catches that he makes. It's and insane. What's crazy last week versus a good Chargers team, he only ran the ball six times for six yards. He had 245 uh, yards passing. He threw the ball 32 times. And it was in a game that they were winning most of it. So I think they're trusting him more. And as the season goes or, uh, goes along, he's going to have such a bigger role. And George Pickens will as well because of it. Love to see that. Go dogs, by the way. Yeah. All right. Next up, we're going to Kyle Pitts over 33 and a half receiving yards. The projection for Atlanta's tight end is 43.8 in the receiving yards department. 
Pitts is averaging 35 receiving yards per game, and he just put up 59 against a really good Chiefs defense, now going up against a Saints team, allowing 49 receiving yards per game to the tight end position, which is kind of middle of the road, 16th overall. But when you talk about DVOA, which brings in the quality of opponent, New Orleans actually ranks 29th in that stat category. Dallas Goddard, remember, just put up 170. He was our pick last week, and he crushed the over. Uh, Prior to that, it was Luke Schoonmaker for, 48 receiving yards so I think Kyle Pitts can definitely get there and you saw him kind of have a little bit more chemistry lately with Kirk Cousins I think they're starting to kind of really feel things out on that offense and starting to get it going there in Atlanta what do you think about Kyle Pitts for this week Kyle Pitts is in just an absolute smash spot he is Mm -hmm. Uh, in a matchup versus the Saints where they are 32nd on our defensive matchup tool Dallas Goddard just absolutely took them to school and Mm -hmm. the Saints have had problems you know defending tight end dating back to last year their 30th ranked allowing 61.6 yard uh, receiving yards to the tight end over the last nine games so that goes into last year they were bad and uh, we've seen it once again my only concern is the fact that Kyle Pitts only has 12 targets on the year his target numbers need to come up. I think they will. I think they know they need to get Pitts the ball. Uh, and this is a great matchup to really get that going. Plus, he is averaging 51% more fantasy points uh, in a dome. So it's a great matchup. He's in a dome. Mm-hmm. Let's go, Kyle Pitts. Yeah. And I do want to really make maybe a quick side note here when we talk about mm-hmm. some of the lower scoring games, maybe not as big of output with our wide receivers this season that we've seen maybe in seasons past. There's been a lot of discussion about, you know, cover two defense and it taking away the big receiving plays down the field. Well, I think kind of the counter punch to that is going to be seeing a lot of tight ends and pass catching situations over the middle of the field because, okay, if you're going to play your, you know, your safeties there, why don't you just bring a big pass catcher that's six, four, you know, like a Dallas Goddard type who's just big and hard to tackle and challenge those cornerbacks to tackle a 6'4", you know, 150 pound, uh, 250 pound rather. I don't think 150 would, would cut it there, but uh, challenge those guys to make a defensive plan while those guys are not fun to tackle. So I think you could see maybe a little adjustment in the offense in terms of getting the pass catchers or those tight ends, turning them into more pass catcher roles. What do you think about that? I mean, absolutely. So I... Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> tight ends. Let's go. We're it. all about the tight ends. All right. Let's move on to Arizona Cardinals wide receiver, their rookie, Marvin Harrison Jr., over 67 and a half receiving yards. Now, he was limited in practice with a quad injury, but he was still out there running drills. So we're going to keep rolling with Harrison here because he's in a good spot. Uh, 130, 130 receiving yards back in week two against the Rams. He only had 64 receiving yards last week against Detroit, but I still think this is a excellent spot for Harrison one of only three players with 300 plus air yards over the last two weeks the others are Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze but the big thing here is Trey McBride likely out he's in concussion protocol he did not practice so if that's the case that takes away one of Kyler Murray's favorite targets and we've already started to see him establish a lot more chemistry with Kyler Murray and starting to connect on those big deep plays so like the spot here for Marvin Harrison how about you Tyler I love it for Marvin Harrison. So he has 22 targets on the year. Trey McBride has 21. So you're taking the second target earner out of the equation. More is going to roll to Marvin Harrison. And it's just a amazing spot. Washington is 32nd uh, in our team defense tool versus wide receiver one. Uh, Jamar Chase, who I'm not saying Marvin Harrison is Jamar Chase yet, Mm -hmm. but he just took them to school and it can absolutely happen again. They had one high safety all night on Chase and what did Burrow do? He just kept throwing it up and I think there is a good chance that happens once again for Harrison. All right, so nice plays there. Those three plays are from our Props AI tool on the LineStar app. Make sure to check that out at linestarapp.com to help you find the best value. Now it's time for Tyler and I to give our favorite picks of the day on Sunday week four. What you got, Tyler? I got to go with my man Nico Collins over 
79.5 receiving yards. Our line star projections, 89. He's been over in all three games this year. And once uh, once again, there is no Joe Mixon. Now, there is also no Tank Dell. So more work is going to go his way. C.J. Stroud averages 50% more fantasy points in domes. Jacksonville, 21st on our team defense tool versus wide receiver ones. They're allowing 179 yards per game to the wide receiver. They also play a ton of man, which just happens to be where Nico Collins absolutely crushes. I love mm-hmm. Nico this week. All right. I'm going to take it back to the Cardinals because I kind of like them a lot this week in terms of prop betting. And also, if you're playing daily fantasy, might be a good position to have Kyler Murray on your squad. I have the over on his passing yards here at 228 and a half. Now, he's only averaging 211 pass yards, but he just hasn't been in a situation where he's really had to throw the ball up. But he's going up against a Washington Commanders defense that ranks 32nd dead last and past DVOA. So this could be a good opportunity to start connecting with Marvin Harrison Jr. And that's, in fact, another reason is we want a little bit of correlation here with those two picks. Um, Again, Joe Burrow against Washington put up 324 just last week. Daniel Jones only had 178. But Baker the week prior had 289 against Washington. And I just don't think they're a very good defense. They're allowing 264 passing yards per game on average. And this is the highest game total of the slate at 49 and a half. Arizona's three and a half point favorites. So I think Kyler Murray's going to have to air it out a little bit in this one and find his hopefully favorite receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr. So he cashes on the receiving yards for Harrison and then on the over on passing yards as well. This is also Arizona's only three and a half point favorites. So this might be a very competitive affair, in which case I think this could kind of drive up both Jaden Daniels numbers and Kyler Murray's. So hopefully uh, that's the case this weekend and we get over 228 and a half passing yards for Kyler Murray. Also good to note that the newest Call of Duty, this is extensive research that I do for you guys. New Call of Duty Black Ops 6 release date is October 25th. So we're in the clear for a little while. Uh, we'll, We'll get a very studious Kyler Murray who's dissecting film until then. That's, of course, in reference to the story that came out a couple of years ago about Kyler Murray having it in his contract that he had to do a certain number of hours of film study each week and mm-hmm. that he might have been playing Call of Duty. So that's just a little funny joke. Do you like that, Tyler? Had to throw that one in I there. Extend- I, this is I the love research. that you brought that up. This is the research that we do for our Line Star uh, subs on YouTube, you know? Got to give him all the details. So we're good until October 25th with Kyler in DFS and prop betting. So let's hope it cashes this week. Uh, Let us know if you are liking our picks. If you hate them, if you think we're crazy, let us know in the comments. If you've got any locks, drop them as well, because we're all trying to help each other out and beat the books. You guys have been so great about dropping your picks, and it's been so helpful, not only to us, but the rest of the community. So we so appreciate that. Again, all of our picks, Line Star, or on <laughs> Underdog, Sleeper, Chalkboard, Parlay Play, and we have links to that below. So if you don't have them, you can download them. Use the promo code Line Star, though. That's the key to get the deposit match plus one free month of Line Star. And then like this video, subscribe to the channel and comment below for your chance to win 100 bucks if we nail all of our picks this week which it's gonna happen let's go put the positive energy out there let's go get these picks this week good luck we'll see you guys next time